Hi everyone, Lee Packett here and you are watching The Business of Law, the only web TV show focusing on both the challenges and the opportunities facing today's legal profession. I'm happy to say my guest is Mark Cohen, founder and CEO of Legal Mosaic. He joins us over Skype from Washington, D.C. Welcome, sir. Good to see you again. Thanks, Lee. Good to be here. So you had uh, a pretty interesting piece that you wrote for uh, Bloomberg BNA a couple weeks ago that talked about separated and unpacked two distinct concepts central to the legal profession. On one hand, you had legal practice. On the other, you had delivery of legal services. Can you talk to us a little bit about that article and why you made this distinction? Sure. Well, most people would uh, agree, Lee, that there's a lot of change going on in the legal vertical. But most people use the term changes in the law uh, interchangeably to describe uh, legal practice and the delivery of legal services. They're two very different things. Mm -hmm. Why do you think so many people have such a hard time kind of looking at it from this point of view? I mean, I got to say, the dichotomy jumped out at me as well. It's not, it's not, it's not a manner of thinking about these things that, that I'm accustomed to either. Why do you think that is? Well, I think lawyers are typically not known for stepping back and having great introspection uh, with regard to uh, what they do. Although, you know, kind of ironically, uh, lawyers are paid and generally paid pretty handsomely to parse words and to, um, you know, sort of read things very closely and carefully. Mm. Um, but to answer your question, um, the, the practice of law has really changed very little um, since I became a uh, lawyer back when Jimmy Carter was still in the White House and the Pittsburgh Pirates last won the World Series. Um, that is, um, what lawyers actually do uh, has not changed very much. Uh, however, there is a tectonic shift going on in terms of the way the services that they are performing are being delivered, specifically the structures by which they're de being delivered and indeed uh, the very entities by which they're being delivered. Can you unpack that a little bit more for us, like some examples about how this is happening? And I mean, what are the implications here? Sure. Well, first of all, with respect to the practice of law, the reason I say it hasn't changed very much is because the basic rules of evidence, the basic rules that govern professional conduct really haven't changed very much in the last three or four decades. However, um, as legal services have become disaggregated, or as some people like to say, unbundled, and as new providers are coming in, whereas once the law firm was the vehicle by which all legal services were are being delivered, um, you begin to see new entrants and you begin to see different ways that legal services are be being provided. And there are several reasons and, and, and causes, in my opinion, why those changes are occurring. Yeah, but in this process of you know disaggregation, it seems that law or law firms run the risk of lo losing out areas of business, not only to new entrants, but also other established areas of professional services. Isn't that true? I mean, this isn't a, this isn't a happy picture you're painting for the AMLAW 200. Well, uh, I think already the AMLAW 200 is kind of morphing into most people's uh, discussion of the AMLAW 100. Why is that? Because I think 100 of the 200 firms are already experiencing the substantial kinds of uh, pain uh, that you're beginning to uh, describe here. Uh, but with respect to uh, the remaining ones, there's no question that they're ceding ground uh, to a multiplicity of other providers, uh, to technology companies, um, uh, perhaps uh, around the corner to artificial intelligence, and all sorts of other competitors. For example, the big four are now stepping into the legal arena in a pretty significant way. For sure. I, I would imagine uh, a lot of members of the old guard, however, uh, would say that this is not a good development from, from clients' perspectives because lawyers, people who have gone through the, the steps in order to get accredited to dispense legal advice, are going to be removed from certain parts of, of the process. What would you say to that? Uh, I would say that there's some measure of truth to that, although I think it's uh, slightly overstated. I think that lawyers are going to continue to play a role. Um, it's just that very often they are going to be working outside of law firms and more commonly in other types 
of structures. For example, they may be working for accounting firms. They may be working for different consultancies. They may be working for legal service providers. Uh, more and more of them are working in-house. Um, but the stranglehold that the law firms have traditionally held over the legal delivery process um, is really what's changing. Mm. I think we all know what the worst case scenario is, but I was wondering if you could channel a uh, best case scenario for, say, a firm that's ranked you know, somewhere between 75 to 150 in the AMLA rankings. What's the best case scenario for transitioning through this process you're saying is going to unfold? Well, were I a managing partner uh, as long ago and far away I was um, of one of these firms, I think one of the things that I would be looking at is trying to excel in those areas where I really had a differentiated level of service. Uh, another thing that I would do is uh, I would be looking very seriously at uh, partnering uh, with certain types of service providers uh, who would be able to uh, partner with me to create uh, a kind of a suite of back-end services that I can no longer deliver cost-effectively. Uh, the theory being that it's better to retain client control and some revenue for those services than to cede it all together to another type of provider. Those are the kinds of things that I would be looking at. Mm. Do you, how high is your confidence level that law firm leaders today view the world in similar terms? Well, obviously, I can't uh, categorically speak for all of them. There's a lot of them. Uh, but, I realize that's a tough question. But, but, but I think that for uh, most of them, they are now waking up to the fact um, that it is a different ball game, and that to be able to survive, much less to uh, preserve PPP, they're going to have to do some things very differently. No, for sure. Uh, Mark, really interesting piece. I suggest everyone go check it out on uh, Bloomberg BNA's uh, business of law community website and also on Legal Mosaic. Mark Cohen, thanks for joining us today, sir. Thank you, Lee. That's what we have for this week. If you'd like to see more of the stuff we're working on, be sure to go check us out online. You can find us on mimesislaw.com. We're also on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. I'm Lee Pacquia. Thanks for watching. We saw some historic peaks for, for deal activity, particularly in private equity, in, in value.